Hello, everyone. My name is Abby Griffiths. I'm the owner and founder of Clarity Fitness, Georgia's first and only body positive wellness center. And a little bit about Clarity Fitness before we get into the fun stuff. It is a body positive wellness center in Decatur, and we have personal training, group exercise, and really, really amazing fitness spaces for people to take advantage of. Everything is geared toward body positivity. And of course, eating disorder awareness, which is from my own personal story and journey in finding fitness that is fun, that is empowering in figuring out how to work on the same team as my body instead of always feeling like I'm working against it. So it's been a really, really amazing journey to move through this finding of what feels good to me, what wellness looks like on my own terms. And of course, wellness also not just fitness, but encompasses mental health too. And so that is a perfect opportunity to bring in our webinar for tonight. We are so beyond excited and honored to have Eleni's time here tonight. And I'm so excited to really dive into conquering anxiety, which is a topic that I am personally going to be reaping the benefits of tonight because I'm feeling anxious this week. So that'll be awesome. <laughs> so we're super, super excited. And I wanted to go ahead and make sure that everyone knew that this was a safe space. Again, quick disclaimer, we are going to request cameras on. So I'm going to keep my camera on the whole time. Time. And again, pajamas are totally fine. There's no wrong answer. We just ask that Eleni can see your face for making sure that this is all safe and everything's feeling good. So even if it's not the best camera angle, you're fine, body positive in itself. So all is good. And we are super excited to kick us off. I will pass the mic to Eleni. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited. And thanks guys for keeping your cameras on. I just, um, when we do the exercises, I'm going to teach you some stuff. I just want, I just need to be able to see you just to make sure everybody's, you know, cool and all that kind of thing. So I'm really excited. And um, there will be time for questions at the end, a hundred percent. And that part won't be recorded. So you can feel free to ask me whatever you need to ask me. Um, so if you think of something during the workshop and you want to jot it down real quick, or post it in the chat, we'll get to it at the end. Totally, okay? All right, I'm gonna share my screen. Can you guys see it? Yep. We're all good? Woohoo! <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm Elena Capitano, Rapid Release Coach. Now I'm just going to tell you a little bit about me just quickly and, you know, why am I here? What's going on? What do I even do? So um, I am the mom of a almost 14 year old son, which is very terrifying because he's going into high school um, and I'm married to my husband, Dan. So I was a personal trainer and I owned a studio here uh, where I live, which I live outside Toronto in Canada. And, um, you know, sort of like Abby, which is really cool how we connected that way. And I struggled with a lot of stuff. So I had, I trained for some fitness competitions. I had, um, it gave me the gift of a eating disorder, which I kind of think was always there a little bit um, in the back of my mind. And before that, my son was actually born at 26 weeks. So I had had birth trauma from that birth and you know at the time I just thought we just suck it up and move on with things right like get over it um he's fine he's home whatever and I didn't realize I was carrying on that carrying that trauma and a lot of guilt and shame around it so I feel that that was connected to my eating stuff later on and we're going to see as we go how stuff kind of all relates in your brain so I was really struggling about maybe six years ago, but I didn't want to go to therapy and talk about myself endlessly over and over again. I couldn't think of anything worse, right? We all know what our problems are and I didn't want to talk about it. So I was actually at a networking event and I heard a woman talking about this thing called NLP and how it helped your problems and it changed your brain and you didn't have to talk about your stuff. And I was like, all right, sign me up. Let's do it. I started working with her as my coach and I could not believe how fast I felt better. Like, you know, it was at the point where 
I was, you know, couldn't even get dressed in the morning because I would start to cry and I felt so ugly and so bad about myself. And, you know, within, I would even say a few sessions, I felt just this relief. And I thought, this is so cool, but I didn't understand it at all. Like I come home and my husband would be like, so what did you and Tara do in your session? And I'd say, I, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> so I started to really be curious about how it all worked. So I got certified in the processes and I just started tra- attracting clients. And at that point, that work was so exciting to me, um, seeing the changes in people. And the personal training just had stopped exciting me. So long story short, I made the switch and I've had a full-time coaching practice ever since. And I created a system with different modalities and I have a 97% success rate helping people actually get rid of their problem so that they can move on and just be their best selves and have an amazing life. So right now, I mean, always kind of, but especially right now, we're living in an unstable environment. I was just telling Abby that in Canada, Ontario, where I am, we've been on lockdown for months and months and months. (laughs) We're just starting to open up, right? And I was noticing when COVID started, my clients who had gotten rid of their anxiety and stuff were calling me and, you know, things were starting to come back and show up again. And I was like, what's going on, you know? But here's the thing. Our brains are always looking for that stability, right? And when it can't find it, it often creates negativity or goes back to negative patterns and emotions, right? It's trying to find kind of what it's what it's comfortably un- uncomfortable <laughs> with, right? And so you might start to feel stressed and overwhelmed. Might find that there's behaviors that you can't control. You might find that our good friend anxiety comes to call angry outbursts that you later regret. Not that any of us would know anything about that. (laughs) Never yell at my kids. Um, So here's the question, right? Would you like to control this so you can feel calm and in control of your emotions and yourself all the time? Of course, right? So by the end of the session, I'm gonna give you four tools that are gonna help you control your anxiety, stress and overwhelm in the moment with a surprise at the end which is going to be fun um, because really the only thing we can control is ourselves, right? We can only control our emotions, our actions, our thoughts, right? So when we're able to have these concrete tools to help us control all of that in the moment or ongoing, that's when you really can take back your power, right? So I'm going to go over one, the first one. So The first technique is called peripheral vision. And I feel like I wanna look at the camera so I don't look weird in the video, but I also wanna look at you guys because you guys are over here. (laughs) If I'm looking all over the place, that's why. So peripheral vision, we all know what it is, right? Our peripherals. But it's also a really powerful technique that you can use to get present and calm in the moment of stress. Um, What it actually is, so when you're anxious, you're in what we call foveal vision. It's like that uh, tunnel vision, right? We've all felt that when you're anxious, stressed, freaked out. What we wanna do in those situations is open our brain up so that we can be centered and calm in the moment and be in control. And it's a very, very simple process. Um, The peripheral vision is also, this technique is also called the learning state. And actually when kids were tested, before they wrote a test, if they go into this technique of peripheral vision, they get 30% higher test scores because it opens up your unconscious mind, which is we're gonna be talking about a bit later, and allows you to get that information from your unconscious and bring it into your conscious mind. So it's a very, very cool technique. So you can teach it to your little guy, little ones if you have any. So all you're gonna do, we're gonna do it together, is you're gonna look straight ahead and you're gonna focus on a spot like maybe 30 degrees up, okay? So your head doesn't move, your eyes are gonna focus on a spot, 30 degrees up, and you're gonna put your hands beside your face so that as you're looking up, you're also looking out and seeing your fingers wiggle, okay? And just take a deep breath, looking up and out, 
And now I want you to widen your periphery, peripheral vision. So as you're looking up, look a little bit wider out. And just be aware of your feelings. Be aware of like your physical sensations, where you're sitting, and just breathe and relax. <laughs> cool. How'd that feel? It's, it's nice, right? Now, you're going to get to a point where you're not going to have to be, you know, sitting in the car and doing this, right? <laughs> when you practice, I always tell my clients to practice this as often as you can, because you want these techniques to be top of mind, too, right? Like, it's no good for us to learn all this stuff and then forget to use it, which always happens. So, um, practice it and so that you can bring it out. So, when you might want to bring it out is... You know, if you feel like a surge of anger that doesn't quite feel appropriate, like you're going to yell at your husband or your kids or whoever, if you can just take a two second step back, go into peripheral vision just for a second, it really calms you down very quickly. And like I said, it's a great technique to teach to kids. So that is your first one, peripheral vision. And now that we're all focused and our unconscious minds are open, we're going to be so receptive to all the stuff that we're going to learn. Awesome. So what would your life be like if in all past memories, there was no fear, guilt, or anger? What if the past had no power over you? Wouldn't that be cool? And what if instead of these emotions, you had only the lessons from them and none of the negative emotions and behaviors like anxiety, fear, and depression? And what if you already have all the resources from past events already and you just need a tour guide? The cool thing is, is that we all have everything that we need to heal already, right? Often we just need to be shown that. So this is the freedom you can have when you learn to change your brain. And it all works in the unconscious mind. So our conscious mind is sort of the brain that we, when we talk about our brain and brain power, it's the conscious mind we're really thinking of, right? The conscious mind is storing, it's really only responsible for 10% of what we do um, and the change that we can affect. Our conscious mind is, um, you know, it wants to be right, it's rational, it's that part of your mind that's like, shut up, I'm fine, I'm gonna get over this, I'm a grown up, I can handle it, right? <laughs> and it just stores the information that you need for right now, right? So your conscious mind is storing that information, you know, I need to be able to turn on my computer and get to work and remember things that are relevant to my day-to-day -day life, right? Our unconscious mind is the driver of the bus. So it's responsible for 90% of the change. Um, it's the programming that we have in our brain. It organizes and stores all of our memories. It preserves and runs the body. Like our unconscious mind is keeping a heart beating right now, right? It's keeping your breathing going. And it is the most powerful part of your brain because it, you know, when people say, I don't know why I did that. Why did I do that stupid thing, right? It's from your unconscious mind. Your unconscious mind knows everything, but we just have to learn how to access it, right? Because we're so focused on using that rational conscious mind that it, you know, we're just, it's like a muscle. You have to learn how to use it again, right? And so your unconscious mind has stored everything that's ever happened to you, even though you don't consciously remember it. I always tell my clients, just because you don't remember taking your first breath, doesn't mean it didn't happen, right? Of course it did, we were all born. <laughs> but it's not important for me to live my life right now to remember my first breath as I was born, right? And a lot of people even believe that, you know, we have a memory in utero and some people believe in past lives. Whatever you believe, that's all your unconscious mind doing all that. So all the events that follow from things that happen become linked in a neurological chain in your brain. So your unconscious mind has an experience in the present moment, right? And then it looks for context and sameness. And for our purposes, it's, it's a negative event, right? It can be positive, but for the yucky stuff, it's a negative event. So your, your brain goes into the past to the first time you might have felt that emotion. It grabs that emotion and it pulls it forward to the present. So then the next time something similar happens, it adds another link in the chain, okay? So I'm gonna give you an example. It's about socks. <laughs> okay, so I had a client and 
her husband had been unfaithful. They'd had a lot of challenges in the relationship, but she told me, I'm over it. I'm fine. We worked through it. It's all good. Cool. So one day she sees the socks on the floor in the middle of the living room and she loses her mind, freaking out, screaming, smashing things, right? All over the place. Okay. She wasn't mad at the socks. Right? It wasn't about the socks. Her brain was like, that frustrates me. Oh, when was another time I felt frustrated with my husband, right? Reaches in the past, pulls it forward. Not appropriate to have a screaming fit at the socks in that present moment, right? It's all to do with the past. So that is, you know, how that chain works. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it makes sense that if we can remove the emotion from that first event, it's going to be removed from the neurological chain and from the event we're experiencing right now, right? Because what we're feeling often has little to do with the present and everything to do with the past, at least for the work that I do, right? I mean, how many times, you know, do you feel anxious or sad or angry? And you think, I don't, where is that even coming from, right? What is that even about? It's from the past. So in traditional therapy, the concern is the context of the event, right? You really dig in, you have to give a lot of detail. Why did it happen? Why did you feel that way? When I work with clients, the event doesn't matter. All I care about is the emotion. So that's why we don't have to talk about it. So somebody might tell me they had a terrible trauma at age six. I'll, they don't need to talk about it. I just need to know the emotions that they felt because that is where the power is, right? So we just, when we disconnect the emotion from the event, your feelings and behavior change without you even thinking about it. I'm just gonna give you a really quick example just to sort of clarify it. So I had a client and she came to me because she was working in a toxic environment and she was crying all the time at work. She felt like her boss was picking on her and bullying her. We realized this was a pattern that had been happening throughout her life and the feeling it was creating was unworthy, okay? So we worked to release those old events that created that pattern. And then our last session, I asked her how it was going with her boss. And she said, well, I don't really know because I, I feel like I never see him and I never think about him. Okay. Well, obviously her boss was still in the office, right? He just didn't have that power over her anymore because she didn't have the same emotions around him, right? So we changed about how she felt. We changed how she felt about the past and it changed her present. All right. So if we know that the events in and of themselves don't matter and only the emotions attached to the events are important, what if we could go back into the past and change the emotion in the first event in the chain, which would change the emotion you feel trapped in today? Imagine that. <laughs> well, guess what? We're going to do it. <laughs> so um, we're going to do um, a version of what I do with my clients. Um, with my clients, there's a whole process that we go when we find the first event and release it. But I just want to give you a taste of sort of what we do and how it all works. So what we're going to do is I'm going to ask you to think of an event where you maybe felt angry or anxious, but something that you didn't really want to feel that maybe didn't feel appropriate in the moment but I want it to be around a two out of 10 in intensity, okay? So I don't want it to be a crazy traumatic thing, right? We want it to be more of like, I freaked out at my husband, I yelled at my kid, you know, that, that, does that make sense, right? Um, and I'm going to lead you through the process and then, you know, I'll give you a little bit of info after we do it. Is that everybody okay with that? We're just gonna have some fun? Okay, cool, awesome. So close your eyes and just think about whatever that event is. Maybe it's an event where you didn't feel like you were resourceful or you feel that like shame, like, oh crap, I wish I'd done this and I did that or whatever it is. Now I want you to make a picture of that event in your head. And I want you to imagine that you're floating up above the event, way up high. Now you're gonna look down on the event. And what we're going to do is we're going to ask your unconscious mind what you can learn from that event. Like if you'd known then what you know now, 
how would things be different or how do you wish you could you, you would have felt in that event and i want you to try to think in i am or i can statement so what you want to learn might be something like i am brave i am strong i can do anything just float up high and ask your unconscious mind what you are meant to learn. How would you rather have felt? How could things have been different? I'm just going to give you a few seconds here. And just get the last couple learnings. And when you're ready, I'm going to ask you to float back to today, back into your body. And when you're comfortable, open your eyes. Fantastic. So what that does, your brain is used to running an event the same, or running um, like a pattern the same way all the time, right? So you've probably got caught up in a, in a pattern like that before where like, ugh shame or anger or anxiety or whatever, right? Well, when we go to an event like that and we force your brain to get positive lessons from it, because that's all we can ever do, right? We can't change the past events, but we can certainly learn from them. So when we're up there looking down and we're forcing our brain to connect to, oh, wait, actually, no, I'm loved, right? I'm accepted. I'm beautiful, whatever that is, it can't run that negative pattern anymore. We disrupt it because our brain needs to go in the same way, right? So when we disrupt that pattern, our brain doesn't quite know what to do and it releases the emotion from the event. Does that make sense? Kind of sort of. So now you just close your eyes for one second and just go back to that event. You don't have to float above it. I want you to hop into it so you're looking through your own eyes. And see if it feels a little bit different. Maybe it's a little bit less intense. Maybe you feel a little bit more ease around it. And open your eyes when you're ready. Did it feel a bit different? Kind of, sort of? <laughs> cool. And it's something that you can do on your own anytime. Right? You know, when you're lying in bed at night and like the stupid thing you did in the third grade is going through your head, right? You're going down that. A little above the event, have a look down, right? What do I want to learn here, right? Well, I'm resourceful. I, I'm, I'm always learning. I am awesome. I don't know, whatever, right? And it really does give you that perspective on the event, right? Um, and like I said, when I work with a client, we go get the first event, so it takes it out of the whole chain, but I think I can't do that in a group, so um, I just thought this would be cool because it still, you know, gives you a little bit of perspective and a little bit of relief here, because we're not used to looking at things like that, right? Our brains always want to go to the negative, to the negative, to the negative. I think I just said all this. Yeah. We just do that visualization and it actually starts to change the neurology in your brain. So when I work with a client, we go to the first event to get whatever emotion we're getting. Later, I ask them to test it and try to feel that emotion and they actually can, it's not there, right? Because we've released the chain. So the next technique I'm gonna teach you is called spinning feelings. And I did not make any of these up, by the way, I can't take credit. So. I just put my own little uh, little taste on it. So this is great for anxiety, but it can be for any feeling that is not feeling appropriate in the moment. So I've used it for anger. I've used it for um, stress, anything like that. Um, road rage, but don't do it while you're driving because you have to close your eyes. Um, and uh, so I'm going to get you to go to a time when you felt either anxious or stressed or frustrated. But remember, again, we wanna keep it around that two out of 10 range. So not too intense, okay? Just a moderate feeling, okay? 
And it's going to feel a little different now because you're not actually feeling that emotion, but I want to teach it to you so you can bring it in when you need it. Okay. So close your eyes. And I want you just to, to go to a time or even if you can just conjure up frustrated, teeny bit of anxious, maybe you're nervous about a speech you have to give or a Zoom presentation or something. So I want you to feel that feeling. And I want you to just put your hand on where you're feeling that feeling. So maybe it's your chest or your stomach, just put your hand there. Good. And I want you to imagine what shape that feeling is and what color it is. And now I want you to imagine that that feeling is a bright turquoise. And that feeling is gonna to start to spin, however that looks to you. Now I want you to make it spin the opposite direction. And it's blue, beautiful turquoise, and it's spinning. And then I want you to add some glitter and sparkles to it. Maybe some streamers to dazzle it up. And how does that feel? You can open your eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Right, so just disassociated from it, that's all. Right, it just takes you out of it. Um, kids love that one. My son uses that all the time. So the spinning feelings is great. And, and these are so fast, right? We can take control over our emotions so easily and quickly, right? And the other cool thing, so when you're using these techniques and it helps, then your brain gets the idea, oh, I can control what I'm feeling, right? And then it just makes positive neurology <laughs> in your brain, which is what we want, right? We want to be able to be in control of our emotions. So we know emotions like anxiety in the present moment are directly connected to past events, right? What about when I'm anxious about the future? Because so much of anxiety is about future fear, right? Well, good news, I have a technique for that. <laughs> so, Fear of the future, and this is a great one. So, I'm gonna ask you to think of an event in the future you're anxious or worried about, um, or make one up, something that is possible. And it can even be like a difficult conversation, right? Or a meeting that you're kind of dreading, or a family get together, right? Some of us have challenging families, whatever that is. Um, I'm gonna teach you a really quick trick to deal with that. All right, so close your eyes. Remember how we floated up above our bodies in the in the a couple exercises ago? <clears throat> I want you to float up in the air. And I want you to float out to whenever that event's gonna happen in the future. So that you're floating above that future event. Okay, looking down. And now I want you to float to 15 minutes after the event happened, and after the event happened in the most amazing way. The best possible outcome. And just feel how that feels, how amazing that feels, how awesome that feels. Feel it through your whole body. Turned out better than you could have ever imagined. And now I want you just to float back into the present moment, into your body and open your eyes. It's literally that easy. So your unconscious mind doesn't know linear time, doesn't understand it. So when you do something like that, your unconscious mind thinks it's already happened and it's already happened in the best way possible. So now it starts to put things in motion to actually make it happen in the best possible way, right? Doesn't that feel better than imagining the worst case scenario <laughs> every time, right? And I always advise my clients, you know, when you have an event like that, don't just do this exercise once, do it as much as you can, right? Until that event happens or until that fear is gone, because it will, it will start to dissipate because now you're giving, you're telling your unconscious mind, oh yeah, I already did that. And it was awesome. And then why do you need to create worry, right? So these little tricks, oh, they seem like nothing are very, very, um, work extremely well because we're just really tricking our brain, right? And tricking our unconscious mind. 
And then just to quickly mention trauma and PTSD, because I mean, so many people I work with have that. And a lot of people who I work with have been told that they're going to have it forever and they just have to manage the symptoms. And that's not true. So um, I help people actually, and we do it in the same way, heal trauma by changing the brain, okay? Different a little bit how we do it, but similar idea, right? We release the emotions from that past event. So the event in and of itself doesn't have the power over you. It's the emotions that have been caused from the event, right? When we can disconnect those, then my clients will say, you know, oh yeah, I never even think about that anymore, right? The power is gone. You've taken it back, which is really cool. And we do similar types of things to eliminate that trauma. So just another quick story. I love telling stories. So I had a client who had, you know, horrific trauma on any, every level you can imagine. She was taking medication. She wasn't sleeping. She had had to stop doing all the things that she loved to do. And this is just what she said. But, you know, in a nutshell, she, like when I remember when I first met her, she couldn't look me in the eye. She was in a really bad place. And I worked with her for three months. And by the end of that, she was playing sports again. She was doing karaoke again. You know, I'm not magic. She changed her brain, right? So she took control of the past and created new neurology that was positive, which is super cool. And you can start that by just doing these types of processes to trick your brain. So when you learn to control your brain, all these cool things happen. So you can have control over your emotions, which is what we talked about. Um, you know, symptoms and, and emotions around trauma is gone. You're calm and in control. You can control your anxiety attacks and depression. I have a lot of clients tell me that they have the space in their brain now that they didn't used to have. Um, and any behaviors that you that were not serving you, right, you can just let go of them, and you often people change without even realizing it. And your relationships can improve also, right? Because when you, we can only change ourselves, but have you ever noticed that when you change yourself, other people around you start to respond to you differently? I've had people tell me that, oh, my husband's way nicer to me now. <laughs> You're just different, right? So you know, it's an amazing thing for us to be able to take back that control. And I love that. Are you ready for your surprise? <laughs> All right. So just a few myth busting things about hypnosis. Um, and again, if you feel weird about this, you don't have to do it, okay? You can keep your eyes open. You can watch the replay of this and do it on your own, whatever you feel comfortable doing, okay? Because it's a, you know, a safe space. But hypnosis, all it is is a deep state of relaxation. That's all it is. And some people go very, very deep. And other people, like even myself, I don't go super deep into hypnosis. And the reason we want that deep relaxation is because at that point, the positive messages that I'm going to be giving you guys are going to be deep put deep into your unconscious mind. So remember that the unconscious mind is the driver of the bus, right? We want those messages that are positive in your unconscious so that when you're just doing your thing during the day, it's making things change and it's working behind the scenes. So it's awesome for people who, you know, the lazy people because, <laughs> because you just don't have to do anything. You just lie there. It's so cool. Um, and for people who, you know, people often say to me, well, I can't be hypnotized. Everyone can be hypnotized just depends on how deep you go, right? You're, nobody, not everybody's gonna be quacking like a duck or whatever. I'm not gonna make you quack like a duck, don't worry. Um, you know, and I always say, have you ever driven somewhere and gotten to your destination and then you can't remember how you got there, right? You've been in trance, <laughs> the trance, right? Your unconscious mind has taken over and gotten you to where you need to be safely. If you've ever watched a movie or a TV show, you've been in trance, right? And that is why the commercials when you're watching TV are at a certain amount of time after the beginning, because they're giving you a little more time in the beginning to be in trance so that you're more suggestible for the commercials. Then the commercials come like quite 
quite like quite close together in the middle and then a little bit less close together near the end because the advertisers know when you're the most suggestible right it's not cool <laughs> um and if you weren't in some kind of a trance while you're watching a show your conscious mind would take over and you wouldn't be able to enjoy it because it would be all that's not true and that wouldn't happen and blah 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 and you couldn't be able to enjoy it right you you need that unconscious mind to suspend your disbelief in those moments so everyone has been hypnotized so um i'm just going to ask you to relax and let me do all the work and we're going to put some positive suggestions into your unconscious and it's just going to be around relaxation and calm and being able to access that kind of stuff whenever you want um I think that's all I want to say about hypnosis. So yeah, just be comfy. And um, again, if you're not comfortable, please, you know, do what you need to do, okay? So close your eyes and just be comfy. And just take a deep breath in and out. In and out. Just start to relax. We're going to start by relaxing all the muscles in your head, all the way down around your forehead, your eyes, your eyelids. In fact, your eyelids are so heavy that even if you tried, you wouldn't be able to open them. They're so heavy. And you want to feel that relaxation going down your cheeks and your mouth and your jaw, any tension that you're holding in your jaw just drops away and your tongue is heavy at the bottom of your mouth. And now your neck is going to relax. It's almost going to feel like there's a warmth going down your neck and shoulders. And your shoulders just drop down and loosen as all the tension just drops away. And everything is becoming more and more relaxed. Now pay attention to your body and realize how your head, neck, and shoulders have begun to relax even more now while you're thinking about relaxing. And you feel that relaxation spreading down your arms into each finger. Your hands and arms are heavy and relaxed and loose. And now you feel that relaxation going down your sides, around your back. Any soreness or tension in your back is just easing away. As you go deeper and deeper. And you wanna feel that relaxation move downward. With every breath you take, allow that relaxation to grow more and more as it goes down your hips and thighs. Your legs are like bricks, they're so heavy. All the way down your ankles and each toe. And you're relaxing more and more. Everything's loose as you go deeper and deeper. And every last bit of tension that you're holding anywhere it's just going to move through your whole body and go out through the bottom of your feet into the earth. Like a tube of toothpaste is being squeezed out through the bottom of your feet as you go deeper and deeper. And now I'd like you to imagine that you're sitting in a chair outside on a sunny day. The temperature is perfect for you and you feel really comfortable just being where you are on this beautiful day. Visualize in front of you a spiraling crystal funnel standing up on its tip, like a gleaming, shimmering sculpture where you can see through all the levels of it as they funnel down to the smallest that meets the ground. This crystal funnel is sparkling and shining in the sun. It's so beautiful to look at it. You see that there are 18 levels to the crystal funnel and a small silver ball at the top level is ready to roll slowly down all levels to the bottom tip where it fits perfectly. In a moment, 
the shiny silver ball will be released and I will count all the levels as you watch it descend. At every level, you will feel yourself becoming more and more relaxed. When the ball reaches the bottom, you'll be completely and totally relaxed. Now imagine the silver ball releasing and I will count as we go. 18, feeling relaxed. 17, 16, 15, completely letting go. 14, 13, 12, deeper relaxation. 11, 10, more and more relaxed. 9, 8, 7, deeper and deeper. 6, 5, 4, Three, so relax. Two and one, all the way into deep, deep relaxation. You're now deeper than you've ever been before. And your unconscious mind is ready to take in all the suggestions I'm going to give it and allow them to become reality. I am relaxed, I'm in control, I can be at peace anytime I want. I'm safe, I'm loved, I can do anything I set my mind to. I am strong, I can create the life I want. I am calm, I can release what doesn't serve me. I'm important, I can achieve all my goals. I'm relaxed, I'm in control, I can be at peace anytime I want. I'm safe, I'm loved, I can do anything I set my mind to. I'm strong, I can create the life I want, I'm calm. I can release what doesn't serve me. I'm important. I can achieve all my goals. I'm relaxed. I'm in control. I can be at peace anytime I want. I'm safe. I am loved. I can do anything I set my mind to. I'm strong. I can create the life I want. I'm calm. I can release what doesn't serve me. I'm important. I can achieve all my goals. And I want you to allow your unconscious mind to just accept all these suggestions way down to the very cells in your body and allow that change to start to happen not only on a neurological level but on a deep deep cellular level and know that you can achieve anything and have anything allow your unconscious mind to just to take a few seconds and absorb all those amazing powerful suggestions and just breathe into them I'm now going to count backwards from five to one. I'm going to wake one fifth of the way with each number that I count. When you come back to the room, you're going to feel energized and awake and ready to have an awesome sleep later on tonight. Five, four, three, two, one. Open your eyes when you're ready. I'm kind of jealous. <laughs> See, it's all scary. It's just fun. So generally, you know, when I'm with a client, we, I would do it for their specific needs, right? But I just thought I would have some things in that everybody would like. So just coming to an end, and then I'm going to open it up for questions. Um, I'm offering um, everybody here a free session. So you can take a screenshot or a picture of this if you want and shoot me an email. Um, I also have a free Facebook group called Conquer Anxiety uh, that I invite you to come and check out. Um, and then, uh, you know, Abby can share the information too, I guess, if you missed the slide. Well, thank you so, so much. This was absolutely amazing. I'm super, super excited. And I'm going to be following up for one of those sessions. So I'm pumped. <laughs> I can't yeah. wait. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. 
Awesome. Well, thanks everyone so, so much for jumping in. This recording will be uploaded to YouTube. We'll cut out um, any of the Q&A just for confidentiality purposes. So you won't specifically be on YouTube, just this presentation as a whole. We are so, so excited to have y'all here. And if you have any further questions, definitely reach out via email. If you're in the Decatur area, definitely come check out Clarity Fitness. We would love to have you. That's in Georgia, in case you don't know where Decatur is. <laughs> and other than that, we will definitely be in touch for future webinars stay tuned to our website and you'll see more but thank you so much it was great have a good night it was really fun thanks so much you guys thank you this is awesome <laughs> i am glad i'm glad you got value out of it absolutely definitely this is great Yay. Oh, i guess i can stop sharing the screen oh yeah <laughs> i'll see you later thank you thanks abby so much Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.